Hi everybody, I'm Rob from State of Art Academy and this is how to make endless textures in Real Engine part number two. In this second part, we're going to create a special endless texture with Substance Designer that work together with the master material we made in this previous video. But first, the boring intro. So to follow this tutorial, you can download the Substance Designer package from below. It's the same we created together in the very first video about endless textures. You will also need the Unreal Engine master material from the last lesson. And down below, you can also find a texture set I prepared for you to test something different than tiles. From part one, we know that we need a huge texture made of smaller ones and then using UV coordinates, offset and vector noise, we can easily randomize them around. We need to understand now how to replace those tiles with different iterations of our endless texture done in Substance Designer. This time we are not going with Substance Player to generate our iteration, instead we can use a special node, the FX map, to automatically place them on a grid. This will save us a lot of time. A consideration before we start, let's say that the final texture is going to be 4K. From the test I've run, I've seen that we can choose between two good setup. The first one is a grid of 4x4 textures, each atlas is only 1k, but we end up with 16 of them. So good randomization, but a low resolution for each sub-texture. I would say this is the right choice for a texture with a lot of small scale elements. In the second setup, I try with a 2x2 grid, which means less randomization, but a better resolution for each atlas and a better result if you're working with a few big elements. So here we are in Substance Designer. I open the Endless Texture package. I'm going to, for the bricks shader, for the brick graph, and I want to change, slightly change the aspect of these bricks to something less, you know, um, standard. So I'm going to pick uh, an alveolus uh, node and I want to change gradient field cells to false. So we have just uh, six um, edge tile. I'm going to increase a little bit the tiling and link this to the transform in order to get some tiles, as you can see, 1K is not enough. So I'm going for a 2K Dexter, all right. And here, up here, you can find a green map with some weird colors in it. And I'm going to change this into the diffuse. So that's it. This is our new brick Dexter our new brick material. I double click on the endless brick to check if the preview is right. Something is not working. I think we need to go to K2. Okay, that's it. Um, there's not really a lot of stuff to do here. Um, we can, you know, work a little bit on the mask. And um, of course, here we have some uh, parameters. We cannot change them from here. So I double click on an empty area in the graph. I scroll down and into input parameters, I find position X and position Y. Position X is already okay. We have a little bit of mask here on the sides, but I need to go up with the position Y, you know, to get a little bit of mask also here. Don't let's not exaggerate. All right, that's it. Last thing to do is the general random seed of our uh, endless brick material, um, and we don't. We need to um, erase the trick for generate textures with Substance Player. We don't need this. Uh, we don't need this because the FX map can't handle dynamic nodes. So, and this is something uh, dynamic. So uh, we need to go back on the random seed here and click on reset to default value. And that's it. So we can, you know, uh, check it, click on clicking on the final diffuse and then, you know, randomizing the seed and you should see, you know, the borders um, always the same and the inside of the texture is always changing. 
So that's it. We are ready to create a new graph where we are going to use the FX map where we are going to create the final texture set for Unreal Engine. So right click on the package name, new substance graph. This time we can go for a endless bricks for UE4. Um, I pick the physically phase spectral glossiness preset and I press OK. And now we need the effects map. You can find it here in the atomic nodes. And the effects map is waiting for some input images. As you can see now, there's only um, an input for that, a number zero. And remember that effects map can be a colored mode in a colored map or a grayscale map. So depending on what you're going to input, you need to change this. And also before we can start, before we start, I would say you can go down here in the roughness and bring the roughness to zero. I just noticed that if you have roughness to one, the final output is a little bit like transparent. So I will put this to zero. And now just to you know let you understand what it's, it's all about, I'm going to select four different um, patterns and I'm going to plug them in uh, in the effects map. So I plug this into the input image zero, this one in the input image one, input image two, and for last, the input image three. And uh, these images are grayscale, so I click here and I change the effects map to grayscale mode, but you know, nothing happens. Why nothing is happening? Because we need to go into the effects map and you know, work in it and change something. So if you need to work in it, you need to press Ctrl E or right click and edit effects map. And here we are, we have a quadrant. What's a quadrant? Um, it's basically the canvas right now. Uh, this is in orange, so is the final canvas, is the final output. But as you, the, the picture here is showing you, we can uh, add more quadrant um, below and attach them here to get you know more images uh, to compose our canvas. So uh, we need another quadrant and this will be the first image on the top left. So I connect it here and I have to tell this quadrant to pick the first image, the image input number zero. So I'm, I'm clicking here and then into patterns, uh, instead of no pattern, I have to click on input image. And automatically I will get the input um, image zero because of this drop down menu uh, choice. So I will copy this a few times. This goes into the second one, this goes into the third one, and then this is going into the last one. And I need to change the input image zero to one in this and the image input zero to two on this and the input image zero on three for this one for the last one so as you can see you know we got the right result and we can go back on our endless brick material and this maybe i don't know could be our diffuse or whatever the normal map or you know it depends on what we plug it in instead of these four textures we want our endless brick material. So I will delete this texture. Now I don't need them anymore. I'm going to bring the endless brick from um, my package. There's some problem with the float fills. So we need to go up with the resolution of this, you know, to, to see it perfectly. Okay, that's it. And now we, I'm going, uh, I'm going for the diffuse. So diffuse in input image zero. Uh, this is the first iteration. We need another iteration. So I'm control C, control V the graph. I change the random seeds and I bring the diffuse, the second diffuse in the second slot and so on with the third graph. We change the random seed, another image input, and the last one here, another random seed, another diffuse. So as you can see from here now, from the effects map, I change it to color because now we have uh, colored inputs and that's it. We have um, each iteration on a different cell of this effects map. And this could become the diffuse. Now, the only things you need to do is to have more effects map with the right color mode and plug them in uh, the correct output. And that's it. You can just uh, save your textures, you know, right clicking on the name of the graph, export output as bitmaps, 
and that's it we can do that and save them for unreal engine and try them <laughs> So for the last bit, here we are in Unreal Engine. I just loaded the diffuse texture into the Endless Matte instance. As you can see, it works nice. And, um, you know, as a bonus content, thanks to White Johnson from Epic Games, you know, for the, uh, for the, um, for the idea, uh, instead of going for the mask with the pixel depth inside the master material, uh, you can use the DDX and DDY nodes, which are nodes that, you know, help you to fix the uh, MIP maps, the MIP values um, with uh, when you use Atlas. So you just right click and search for DDX and DDY here in the map list, get them, attach the UV coordinates and you need you need this to input here in the, the texture diffuse or in the texture you're using and to get them you click on the diffuse uh you click on the sorry in the texture slot and here in mid value mode you need to put the derivative and that's it what can i say thanks so much for all your comments about the endless material tutorials it's been a hell of a ride and i hope you enjoyed this let me know if something is not clear or if you have any idea for the next tutorial about substance designer or unreal engine Speaking about Subs and Designer, I want you to remember that State of Art Academy is organizing a new one-week course about it and if you're interested, please visit our website and check the calendar for the next available date. This is Rob, that's it, that's all, have a nice day, see you next time.